for watching today's teaching from Community Life Church. Open up your heart and see what God might say to you today through His Word. I hope you guys are doing great. Let me just start asking you this question. Okay, now, let me ask you this. My name is Pastor Rod, and I'm so glad that you're here this morning. If your home loses power, are you prepared? You know what I mean? If your apartment or your home would lose power, are you prepared for that? And I don't know for you guys, but like, you know, a few weeks, a few days ago, we had like this big rain. And I don't know, but for like just a second, like there was like the light like flickered a little bit, went out. And it suddenly, I started remembering that, you know, like this past winter, I don't know for you guys, but we had about like a couple hours in our house that we lost power. We lost power, and everything in our house is really electricity-based. We don't have any gas or anything like that. So there was like two hours that I was kind of freaking out. I was like, what's going to happen? I mean, our fridge or like dishwasher? Well, I can wash this stuff with my hands. But, but I was like, what am I going to do? You know, what are we going to do with this? And I was like, you know, the fridge or uh, the washer and dryer, the heat. The heat even was using electricity, and I was like, what, what, what am I going to do? You know, I, what am I going to do? You know, like thinking of all these things, I was like, well, maybe I can store stuff in my dishwasher or I can put stuff in there. But yet, really, it cannot use the full potential, right? Because the dishwasher was meant to work fully to wash the dishes, right? And the same like, you know, uh, my fridge might be a great place to store bread or some stuff like that, but really wasn't meant to be just like that. It will work fully if it's you know, if it's connected to the power source. You know, all those things that I was thinking about, I was like, man. And then about two hours later, then the power came in, and I was like, oh, man, I feel much better now. You know, it's, everything is better. It's back to normal. But it really started making me think about this. You know, from all those things that really, they will not work in their full potential or unless they are connected to a power source. Unless stuff is connected to the right power source. You know, and today what I want to talk to you about is really about understanding the importance of us being connected to a power source. The importance of being connected to a power source. And, you know, the past few weeks we have been talking about really getting familiar with the Holy Spirit. You know, like taking a, a really, maybe you've, you know, if you've known, you know, followed Jesus for many times, for many years and stuff. But I wanted just to say, okay, can we take a fresh look of who the Holy Spirit is? You know, in the first week we talked about that, you know, one of the things that Jesus said was like that it was a really good thing for him to go. Because he was going to send a helper, an advocate, which is the Holy Spirit. You know, he said that the Holy Spirit was going to come alongside with us to really to help us, to give us wisdom. And then the week after, I share with you guys that also that the Holy Spirit gives us gifts. And those gifts are meant to be used. Like any gift that you receive is not meant to be staying in a shelf, you know, wrapped up in there without being open. Actually, a gift is meant to be used, to be a blessing to others. And last week, I shared with you guys about the fruit that really when we are following Jesus, when we are following the prompts of the Spirit, that there should be a fruit that is evident in our life. That's something that I share with you guys. And today, this is what I want to tell you. This is the, the main thing that I want to do is this, that there is power available to share Christ. But here is, are we plugged in to the power source? There's going to be a slide in there. It says, there is power available to share Christ. Then the question here is, are we plugged in to the power source, which is the Holy Spirit? And that's what I want to talk to you about this morning. I want to make sure that you hear that and do you listen to that. You know, one of the main things that I want to say is that, guys, you and I, we were created with a lot of purposes. But one of the purposes that we were created is really for us to be a light into a broken world. To be a light to, in, in places when people are hurting and, and suffering. You know, I can tell you, I, and you don't have to raise your hand. Do you have a family member that you might be saying, you know what? This person really is going through a tough time. You know, you might be saying, you know, this. You might be thinking, well, there is another person that is like, you know, their life is a mess. Or you might be saying, you know, I really, I know someone, a co-worker that is struggling with depression. And let me tell you, one of the things that why we were created is to be able to be a light, to be able to share the hope 
of Christ. And that's part of what I want to talk to you about today. But, you know, if we try to do it on our own strength, it's going to be really hard. That's why we need to be plugged in to the right power source, which is the Holy Spirit. Which is the Holy Spirit. There is power available. The question here is, are we plugged in to the power source? Just like my appliances in the middle of the winter, they were great, except they did not have the source, the energy to do what they were meant to do completely. You know, Jesus said something that was really interesting. You know, when he was almost ready to leave the earth, he tells something to his followers. You know, of course, he said that he was going to send an advocate, but he said something that really, I want to make sure that you hear this clearly. It says the following, and it's in Acts 1.8. It says this, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. You know, he was saying something. He said, like, something is going to happen. When I go, you are going to receive power, which is going to be when my spirit is going to live in you. Let me say this one more time. He said, like, you know, when I live, you're going to receive a power that is going to live in your life. And I want to make sure that you know that. And the reason of that is so you can be my witness. So you can say and you can speak what I've taught you, what you know about me. And he said to Judea, to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So he's saying you will receive power and you're going to be my witness. But then something happened. And this is when actually the, the, they, they are empowered by the Holy Spirit. And it's in Acts 2. And I want to read that to you and listen to this. There was a big gathering. It was a moment where a lot of people from out of town, they used to come to a big festivity to celebrate that it was called, you know, the day of Pentecost. And at that moment, something happened. Let me read it to you. You know, on the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And then it says, Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appear on a settle and settle on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them abilities. So now at that moment, do you see what happened? Those guys were kind of praying, they were gathering, and suddenly the promise that Jesus gave them became true, became a reality. They were empowered. And made me think like with some like tongues of fire that were in there. It makes me think like my fire pit. Imagine like there were fire pits in someone's head. I don't know. Imagine that. That would be pretty hot, I think, you know. Uh, but anyway. So now, at that moment, those guys started speaking in another languages. And people start thinking that they were actually, you know, going crazy. Imagine that. Like there were people from, you know, imagine like different languages. And suddenly they are like understanding. When they're like, what are they saying? They are saying the message, and I can understand them in my native language. That would have been amazing. But at that moment, Peter, the leader of the church, he says the following. He says, you know what? Because people were saying, those guys must be drunk. I mean, they are just acting so crazy. They might be drunk, you know? And then he said, like, no, this is a fulfillment of a prophecy. This is something that years and years ago, someone said that it was going to happen. That when, the, when you know, there was going to be power in falling on us and we're going to be able to be a testimony you know it's a fulfillment of testimony so now in here you know it talks about something that we talked on our second week which it was about speaking in different languages you know and this talks about speaking in tongues and you know there is something that we talked about in second in our second week about that and I wanted to tell you this. You know, I know that talking about the gift of tongues, if you're not familiar with this, it could be something that might be a little bit different. But I wanted to tell you the following, is that I want to tell you this topic will not divide us. This topic will not divide us. 
Let me tell you why. I personally believe in speaking in tongues. I personally believe that. But I also, I have friends and I know people here that they love Jesus as much as I do. And they might believe a little bit differently. But you know what? I've decided that that's not going to be something that is going to divide us. What I want to see here is simply the example of how when the Spirit empowers us, He can allow us to share His message. And at that moment was for them to speak in tongues. But I want to show you another example where other disciples were empowered and they were able to be used by God in a mighty way. Can we go there? Are you ready? All right. So let me give you another example. Once again, listen to this. There is power available to share Christ. But the question is, are you and I, are we plugged in to the right source, which is the Holy Spirit? You know, so this second story is a couple chapters after that. Let me leave, give you a little bit of background. So there is two of Jesus' disciples. It's Peter and John. And, you know, and after they've been empowered with the Holy Spirit, they are walking somewhere. Imagine that. That's just me and someone else. We're just walking in there. And suddenly there is a guy asking for money. There is a beggar that is crippled, that cannot move really well. And the first thing that this guy does is he asks for money. He says, hey, guys, give me a dollar. Come on, so I can buy a soda, you know, or, you know, I can get a coffee. And, and at that moment, Peter and John said something. He said, that, you know what? I don't have gold. I don't have silver. But what I have, I give you. And he said, be healed in the name of Jesus. And he raised this guy, and the guy is healed immediately. So in, instead of being a good thing that everybody's like, yeah, this guy that was crippled is doing better. You know what happened? People start getting upset. They were like, why did they heal this guy? I mean, why? Explain us what happened. So Peter and John found themselves being interrogated by religious leaders saying like, why are you doing this? Why, 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 why? And here is the answer. All right. So let's see what it says. It's right here. It's in um, Acts 4. It says the following, Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of our people, are we being questioned today because we've done a good deed for a crippled man? Do you want to know how he was healed? And I love this. It says, Let me clearly state to all of you and to all the people of Israel that he was healed by the powerful name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the man you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead. Imagine that. They were asking him, he's saying like, you know what, the reason we're doing it is because of Jesus. You know, they were so filled with the Spirit that they really needed to share the good news. And then a little bit later, he says this, that in verse 13, it says, The members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, for they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training in the Scriptures. They also recognized them as men who have been with Jesus. Once again, guys, do you see that? Those guys, they were like, it's crazy. Those guys did not go to school, and they are so bold. You know, they look like they actually have been empowered. Their life are different. So once again, there is power available to share Christ. The question here is, are we plugged in to the power source, which is the Holy Spirit? There was boldness. There was ability for them to share because they were connected to a power source. So now... I want to show you an example of how does this work. Are you ready for that? So what I've done is I've actually asked two of my friends to help me with something. So Luis and um, Rusty Holt, if you guys come here for a second. So I want to show you the difference between the power source and I asked for their permission. Um, I asked Luis to get a mustache for part of the stuff and he said no. But anyway, let's give a hand to those guys. Okay, Rusty, would you mind just standing this side? Luis, you can be right here. So these guys are going to be doing a contest about who can actually, um, there is going to be a couple things. Uh, my beautiful and amazing attendant uh, uh, helper, uh, Caleb Welsingham, is going to help me. All right. So we're going to be doing something. Thank you very much. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Wait, so they're going to be doing a contest about who can actually, great job, who can drill, uh, he can actually put a screw like faster into the wood. But first of all, we want to do safety first here. So please, guys, make sure you put your gloves on. All right. All right. Safety first. There you go. 
All right, and also we don't want to get sued in any way, so we need um, eye protection. Uh, all right, sorry, Rusty, I just have one of those things, so you have to use my uh, daughter's um, goggles. All right. Oh, you have already that? All right. You want to do that? There you go. Sorry, Rusty. All right. So now one of you guys are going to have one tool and you are going to have the other tool. Come on, Caleb. So now the question here is see what's going to be the power source. So first one is going to be Rusty. You're going to have this, my friend. Don't start yet. And then, all right, Luis, you have the little baby here. Came out to play. All right. Thank you, Caleb. You're great, man. All right. So now the question here, I'm going to plug it into the right power source. Now, at the count of three... I want to see Rusty. I trust in you, man. I know you can do it. You're a handy guy. At the count of three, we're going to let them out. They're going to have 30 seconds to see who can get furthest. All right. Don't hurt yourself. At the count of three, one, go. All right. Well, I think that uh, anyway. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> let's count 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Yeah, let's give him a hand. I guess, sorry, Rusty, I think you lost. <laughs> let's measure it. Yeah, let me see. Yeah. All right, thank you guys for being good sports. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's give him a hand. All right. As you can see, very obviously, there was something different about this because it was connected to power, a power. You know, on this one, of course, you know, there was this thing of, you know, do it in your own strength, and you might be able to accomplish a few things, but there is something about us being empowered by the Holy Spirit. To be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Um, because it is available. Guys, there is a part that I want to share with you in here. You know, and in the scripture in Acts 1a that we started reading, it said something that I want to make sure that you see. It said this, that you will be my witness. You will receive power. But here, this is the part that you will be my witnesses, telling people about everywhere. In Jerusalem throughout Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. I want to show you a map of what it looked like, of, of those regions. If you see in here, you know, this was Jerusalem. This was where those guys were in. And then after that, it says Judea. It was like the town that was really close to. Then Samaria, you know what? That was where people that were very different, culturally different than, than, than the Jewish people lived there. He was, Jesus was saying, you're going to be my witness also in there. And then he says to the rest, to the ends of the earth. So this is the question that I want to ask you this morning. You know, what is your Jerusalem? What might be your, your Jerusalem? It might be your family. It might be certain people that are really close to you. That maybe this is the moment where like this is what Jesus was saying. I'm empowering you so you can actually be my witness to your Jerusalem. What might be your Judea? It might be actually your neighbors. It might be your co-workers. It might be people that are right there that literally the Holy Spirit wants to empower us. The Spirit of God wants to inspire, empower us to be witness to our Judea. But what about even Samaria? What are the people that are actually are culturally or they are very different than you? That maybe God is saying, you know what? I am empowering you to be my witness, to tell them the good news about me. What is your Samaria? And what are the ends of the earth? You know, maybe, you know, God is challenging to say, you know, I want you to go on missions. I want you to love people that are really far away. I want to make sure that you do that. You know, maybe God is calling you to a mission. 
But I really want to make sure that you know that, that there is power available. The question in here is, are we connected to the right source, which is the Holy Spirit? Because, guys, I am the first one to tell you that there are times when I want to do it on my own. There are times when I want to do it on my own strength, in my own timing. But you know what? There is something when we are saying, I am relying on the Spirit of God to lead me, to guide me. You know, last week, guys, something happened. Um, we were invited on Sunday. Renee and I, we end up going and, and um, hanging out just for a minute with uh, some students from Inner Varsity. It's a college ministry. And they asked us just to pray for them. They were getting this training to get ready to go out on campus and, and just really start meeting some of the new college students coming in. And I know that the, the different uh, ministries here that reach out to colleges, they do something similar. But, you know, one of the things that they wanted to do is they wanted to start spiritual conversations. And one of the things that we did is we literally, we, they said, can you guys pray for us? And I was like, sure. And we pray for them and we bless them. And, you know, I was, there was something in my heart that started like uh, igniting in me that I was like, man, this college students that could be doing something else are taking time in their week that are going to go to have spiritual conversations with people. Imagine that. And I mean, I was like, man, we need to pray. I need to pray for college students. I need to pray for this. But, you know, I wanted just to take a time, and I actually asked one of my friends. Her name is Jen Jordan. She's actually a campus minister for Inner Varsity to just to share with you guys just a couple of the stories that happened, you know, this past week as they were sharing. So, Jen, would you mind just coming up? And then, um, if you mind, she's going to be sharing. Let's give her a hand. She's going to be just sharing a couple of the stories, you know, and just really to see how, you know, it's not just them in their own strength, but they are being empowered by the Spirit to do what they are doing. So, Jen, share with us. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm the director of Inner Varsity Christian Fellowship at Radford, and we're a multi-ethnic witnessing community of students and faculty who are learning to fall in love with God and God's word and God's mission in the world. And the only way that that happens is through the power of the Holy Spirit in our own lives. Uh, and one of the ways that we do that is through a proxy station. It's an interactive art display where we just start spiritual conversations by asking students questions about their lives and about what's going on uh, in the world around them. And I want to share two stories, one from uh, Radford and one from Longwood. I used to be on staff at Longwood. Uh, last year, I met a student named Josh uh, who was super shy, um, a little bit timid, uh, but I could just tell he had a heart for Jesus, and he wanted to figure out how to help his friends meet Jesus, and so we were chatting, and I, sh I showed him a proxy station, he said, Jen, that's crazy. <laughs> um, we're going to go out in the middle of campus and ask people what they think about Jesus? Like, that's crazy. And I said, Josh, if you will pray and you will trust me, I guarantee you that Jesus will show up and something will happen and he'll give you the words to speak. Um, and we did this and it poured down rain. So we moved into the Bonnie and uh, a student came up and another student and I prayed for Josh as he spoke with this woman for over 30 minutes. Uh, and just, they were going back and forth and talking about who Jesus is and Josh uh, shared about how his heart had been changed by Jesus. And the woman turned to me and she said, you know, I'm the vice president of the Muslim Student Association, and I've never had such a beautiful conversation about Jesus before in my life. And this is the most life-giving thing that's happened to me in weeks. And I'm so thankful that you're here. And Josh said, you know, you, you're welcome to come anytime, anytime, and bring all your friends and share with us about your experience with Muhammad, and I'll share with you about my experience with Jesus. And she said, that's one of the most beautiful invitations I've ever had. Um, and several years ago, I met a student, Holly, on the volleyball or on the softball team at, at Longwood. And uh, she said, Jen, I love my, my teammates, but they're always drunk. How do I share th with them about Jesus? And so I said, Holly, let's pray. And we'll just ask Jesus what we're going to do. And the next week, uh, after I met her, Holly said, well, would you come with me and invite all of my teammates to a Bible study? And so she arranged for us to meet after their practice, and they invited, she stood up and said, you know, I don't know what this is going to look like. I've never done this before. This seems crazy to me, but would all of you come 
and just read one passage of scripture with me. And two weeks later, just dozens and dozens of athletes from multiple teams just poured into the team room and just read, uh, and they met week after week after week. And some of them made decisions of faith, um, all because Holly said, I'll listen to the Holy Spirit and we'll see what happens. Um, and I'll, I'll say yes. And this is super risky. Um, I think she may have puked a few times. I don't really know. I wanted to because um, it was crazy to me. Um, and a few months later, she came to me with tears in her eyes and she said, Jen, I love this community deeply, but I think I have to listen to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is telling me that now I need to leave this community of athletes and go plant another community in the nursing department. And so we gathered around her and we blessed her and we prayed over her and we sent her to start another small group in the nursing department. And this is what's happening at campuses and on universities all over the world. The students are learning to listen to the Holy Spirit and learning to say yes and just taking small risks with the people that they know and love to learn how to follow Jesus in everyday life. And this is why I love to do what I do because the Holy Spirit shows up whenever we pray and whenever we ask. So thank you. Let's give her a hand. Man. So now if you happen to remember, please be praying for our campus ministries. Honestly, they are really in dark places. You know, they are really loving, sometimes in very tough situations. And I believe that God is doing something awesome. So now, I just, as we just wrap this moment, I just wanted just to just speak to you from my heart. To be honest, there has been, since I started walking with Christ, there's been always a time where I had to step in faith and trust the Spirit. I still remember when I was a high schooler and, you know, and sometimes it was hard to say no. It was hard sometimes to walk away. Sometimes it was hard to just speak to my friends and tell them about Jesus, you know, and seeing how God moved in miraculous ways that I was like, what? These people are coming to youth? I'm inviting them, you know. I've seen that in college. I've seen it now being married in missions when we've been different places when you're talking to someone and telling them about Jesus seeing Jesus move where people are like how people are really God is just moving there's not an answer and guys in this season let me tell you one of the things that for me and, and I'm totally open God has called us and called me to share the word to you guys a lot of times and many of the times and to be a pastor of this church along with my wife but being super honest, there are a lot of times where I feel very insecure. There are times where I feel like I don't have it all together or what I feel like, man, I don't know if I'm going to be able to convey what needs to be said. But you know what? I go back and I say, Holy Spirit, lead me. Holy Spirit, what I say, I pray that you will let people hear what they need to hear. And I truly believe that that's what God is doing. And I want to make sure that you have that same opportunity. Whatever you might be, whatever situation, that the Holy Spirit, that there is power available to share Christ. The question is, are we plugged in? Are you plugged in? It might be at school. It might be at work. It might be with your family. It might be with your friends. Guys, so this is what I would like for you to do. You know, the disciples, when they were empowered, you know what they were doing? They were in prayer. They were in fellowship. You know, you need to do that. You need to stay connected. Find a fellowship. You know, the other thing is, if you think about it, the disciples, they took a risk. They took a risk. They thought that they were crazy. They thought that they were drunk. But it was the Spirit. They took a risk. Where my God, where is God maybe telling you that you need to risk a little bit? You know, because I know that at least there might be one person that you know that you might be close to that they need to hear the message of the good news of Jesus that you know. So I just want to pray. Let's just, let's just pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you, Lord, for what you are doing, Father. And Lord, as we've talked about, really, about, about the Holy Spirit, Lord, that He is with us, that you are with us, Lord, wherever we go, Lord. I pray, Father, that we won't stop. But, Lord, that we will just remember that you are with us, Lord. And I pray for each one of my brothers and sisters this morning that they will walk with boldness. They will walk with hope. They will be willing to take a risk, Lord, that they will see the people that really need you, Father. But also, Lord, if they don't know anything right now, Father, if there are people here that they don't know anything, that they, Father, that they will really say, I want to start this walk with you. So, Lord, I just pray for each one of us this morning, and we thank you so much, Lord. And everybody say... Amen.
Thank you so much for watching today. For more information about our church, please visit our website at www.clife.church. We look forward to meeting you soon.